thank you very much. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. And being with you this morning to talk about this very, very important subject, because you're absolutely correct. We do have to have a national framework when we're talking about autonomous vehicles. Absolutely. And maybe just kind of give you a little background uh, as to where we've been, where we need to be, and uh, really looking down the road into the future. But starting with the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, we have one of the broadest, if not the broadest jurisdiction of any committee in the House of Representatives and probably in Congress. More bills come out of our committee in the past than any other committee. And uh, when you sit up on our dais and you look out uh, to those people that are before us uh, uh, who are testifying, it's important to always remember that uh, we're looking over the road, down the road five to 10 years, because that's where the innovators are. And we wanna make sure that we're getting the right uh, legislation and then the right regulations in place so that Americans can innovate and be the entrepreneurs out there to lead the world. And uh, I know that uh, as we worked on the, uh, the Self-Drive Act uh, in the 115th Congress, it was very important for me to always ask this question to everyone that was before us. Are you where you thought you'd be five years ago? And everybody's told me the exact same thing. No, we are much farther ahead because the technology is moving ahead quickly. So it's really important then again, that we get the right uh, uh, laws on the books and that we also make sure that, as I said, that the reg right regulations come out. And we do have to have a national framework out there because again, if we don't have that national framework, we can't have 50 states and the District of Columbia out there doing their own thing because you don't wanna be driving down the road uh, uh, like I'd be, I fly out of Detroit every week and crossing the Ohio Michigan line to all of a sudden have a car save in five miles, you have to take back over. Uh, if not, that's gonna pull itself off the road and stop. So it's important that we do get these things right because again, the American people, you know, really demand these types of features in their vehicles. And we're seeing, uh, you know, the tier one, tier two, tier three happening right now. They're being built in as we speak. So Americans out there and people across the globe are already experiencing what this autonomous vehicle legislation can do. And what we did in 115th and why it's really important what we got done, what we were able to get done is I think it's really important. It was a very bipartisan piece of legislation. Our staff alone had over 300 meetings on this legislation, 300 meetings. I can't tell you how many of those meetings I sat in, how many meetings I was in, not only in Washington or in Ohio or someplace in the country talking about self-drive, but we listened to people across the globe because we did have people even talking to us from all over the world, but also here in the United States, it was the most important. And so, you know, when I, uh, think back to what we were able to accomplish. And I think it was really important because again, we listened to everyone and we worked across the aisle to put forth a very good piece of legislation. And that bill did pass unanimously out of committee and uh, which is a, a miracle for a piece of legislation this complex to uh, really get out there like it did. And then the second part of it was, is that we also um, worked with our colleagues over in the Senate. Unfortunately, they couldn't come to an agreement on the legislation. And uh, this is really important because again, it's setting us behind. As we speak, we're falling behind the rest of the world. We know that uh, we think about it from China to Japan, to um, Korea, to Europe, they're all moving ahead. And the United States still does not have the framework in place with legislation. So it's important that we get moving on this legislation once again. And why is it important? Well, when I think about what uh, we wanna be able to make sure that we do in the legislation is making sure that uh, we have a federal preemption out there on that bumper to bumper. We wanna make sure that uh, you know, uh, when somebody's out there working on manufacturing an AV piece of legislation uh, vehicle, that they can know that uh, they won't have to comply with 51 state or 51 um, uh, different jurisdictions here in the United States, the 50 states and the District of Columbia. So it really comes down to, we wanna make sure that uh, we get this thing done, we get it done right. So, you know, when I think back to what we were able to do, again, we looked uh, at the issue of preemption, making sure that we did get that done. We wanted to make sure that we had a very strong cyber uh, uh, part of the, uh, in the legislation. And because again, when I was at the Transportation Research Center here in the state of Ohio, you know, one of the, if not the largest uh, uh, place that you can test in not only in this country, probably in the world, it's amazing what they do down there. 
but uh, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, as I saw what they were doing, working on cyber, making sure that vehicles are safe. We don't want cars to be taken over. You know, uh, as was mentioned uh, with my position on the committee, when you think on the telecommunication side, you know, what we've had to do, what they call rip and replace, you don't want to be thinking about down the road with automobiles that, well, boy, what happens if we have a massive cyber attack on our vehicles? So from the, we want to make sure that we have that. Privacy is a very big uh, uh, issue for us, too, that we want to make sure it was in the legislation. Another area that was uh, right at the top, again, is safety. And, you know, my uh, model during this whole uh, discussion was, and with the legislation, was safety first, safety last, safety always. We have to always make sure that we have a vehicle that is as safe or safer than anything else is on the road today. So we want to make sure we get all these things done. We went to work again in the last Congress. Unfortunately, things did not move. I'm trying to get things moving again in this Congress because, again, we're falling behind the rest of the world. And when you think about what we can be able to do out there, when you think about self-drive, uh, it's so important because not just on the safety end, when you think about the 37,000 highway deaths we had in this country a couple of years ago, when you think about that 94% of all the accidents that are caused out there are caused because of uh, you know, driver inattention I mean, in a lot of cases. It's not the vehicle's fault, it's the driver's fault. So you can take, if you can think about taking 94, maybe 94% of those things off the road and making sure the vehicles are safer, we ought to get it done. Because again, reduce these highway deaths, reduce the number of injuries that we have. It's, you know, when you, it's, it's absolutely horrific out there when you think about the, the human tragedy that occurs on our highways uh, from our accidents that we have. So we wanna make sure uh, we get, this, get it down on the safety side. And then finally, uh, it's so important to help our, our seniors out there and also people that have, that have a disability. Uh, you know, uh, our seniors a lot uh, don't have the mobility anymore. And just think by giving them the opportunity to have um, a AV vehicle to get them from point A to point B is so important. Uh, individuals with disability will be uh, tremendously helped. And I know that it can, I, uh, when I was chairing the subcommittee when this piece of legislation went through, that it was important that uh, my vice chairman of the committee who has a son that has a disability, that uh, if he and his wife aren't there to get him to work, he doesn't get to work. And just think that he had the opportunity to be able to have a self-drive vehicle get him to point A to point B. So that's another important fact that we have to really consider out there is to making sure that we get these things done and get it done quickly. And then when you think about during this, the pandemic, uh, the, what AV could have contributed to helping uh, getting people around, uh, you know, with the fear of getting in vehicles and things like that. If you had an AV, you know, it would have taken care of the situation. So we have all these different areas out there that we can be working on, but it's really important that we get them done. And, uh, you know, we're looking at, again, as I said, in this Congress, we want to make sure that uh, we get the legislation moving again. But, uh, you know, my fear is, is that uh, here it is already April, and we're going to see uh, our time uh, goes backwards when you start a two-year term. Uh, every, every time that uh, we get sworn in, the clock starts ticking back, and uh, so we're losing time. And we're losing, uh, uh, again, behind the rest of the world. We, we don't want to have to take in somebody else's technology that could be developed right here in the United States. It's so important. So, you know, it's important that we get this thing done. Army, get this thing done. Uh, you know, I, I would hope and wish that the administration would uh, look at the AV side of this and what we can do with it and move forward with it. And again, it's from, you know, for everything from safety to helping people with the disabilities, helping uh, our seniors, but it's really making sure that we can get things done. Because again, you know, just look at some of the things that have happened out there is that we know that China is even testing on our roads right now. They're using the United States. In our infrastructure, you know, I'm just looking at a couple of points here. Uh, Germany is set to pass a comprehensive AV uh, legislation in the next month. And so we want to make sure that, uh, again, that the United States is leading, that the United States is uh, setting forth that technology. Because, again, I want to see our technology grown here in the United States. I want to see people that want that, those entrepreneurs who appear before us in our committee be able to go out there and say that, uh, you know, this is the greatest place to be able to, uh, to bring forth this technology. I've ridden in AV cars. You know, uh, 
I know uh, on the, uh, the one uh, was outside of Washington in Virginia and the roads, if you've ever driven out there are pretty busy. But as I got in the driver, not in the driver's seat, but in the passenger seat up next to the driver, and it's, you know, he had a person still behind the wheel. But it was kind of interesting because the first thing he said was, okay, there's a break on your side. He said, don't touch it. <laughs> and so, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing you have to do when you get in there. You have to kind of put your uh, right foot behind your left foot and push back thinking, I can't touch that brake. And I thought to myself, I wish when I taught my daughters how to drive, I had that brake in the car. But, uh, you know, it was amazing because I, I, the questions I asked were all answered so easily. I said, what happens when we're driving down it's a, on, the three, uh, on the three lane right here? And we have a car that's coming down a ramp. And says, just watch. And so what we, uh, we had cars, uh, we were in the right hand lane. Uh, there were cars in the middle lane. The car slowed itself down, let the other car merge in. The next thing is we get down on the next ramp, what happens? We had the, uh, another car coming down and this time the, the center lane was open. The, our car was able to go to the center lane on its own. And so just think of that, uh, because again, we are also going to save fuel out there in the future because we're not going to have traffic jams. We're not going to have to stop and go because all the cars will get on the road. They'll know what the posted speed limit is, and then they'll all start in the flow. And then so you won't have the stop and go. So we're going to see a lot of advantages to AV. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I want to move forward with it. I want to get things going in this Congress. I know that uh, my friend uh, and colleague, uh, Debbie Dingle, and I have talked about this to move this legislation along, and we want to get it done. But, I, but we both agree, is this not a Republican, Democratic, Independent issue when it comes to this? We want that technology developed here in the United States. We want the United States to be the leader. So I greatly appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning. I wish you all the best today and uh, with your discussions that you're going to have. But uh, where we're going in this country and where we can lead the world is so important. So greatly appreciate being with you today and thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. And thank you so much for your inspiring talk. Um, I, I, I also read the uh, Safe Drive Act myself and I very much uh, encouraged by the nation, national framework outlined in the act. Um, in particular, I think the act uh, stressful two critical aspects I think for, it's important for AV deployment. One is to establish the safety um, assessment certification for the, for the deployment of a highly automated vehicle. And the other is for AV developers to uh, develop written um, cybersecurity and privacy plans for such vehicle prior for them to offer uh, for sale. Both of these two aspects I think are critical to build consumer confidence and because public uh, acceptance of self-driving cars ultimately depends upon um, their reliability and safety. Um, I, I think uh, since we don't have uh, a lot of time and uh, I, I only want to ask one question um, related, sort of related with this as well. Um, it, it, last year, um, uh, Congressman, as you know, FCC uh, relocate uh, the safety band uh, for other Wi-Fi use, um, um, and but reserving the 75 megahertz of safety band uh, spectrum. However, I think it's critical to the future deployment of connected automated vehicles. Um, and, and so, um, so what? Uh, what? There's my question to you is there's. Uh, uh, in your position, how do you think Congress can help in this regard in terms of reserving the safety band and uh, um, and then uh, accelerate the deployment of connected automated vehicles? Well, that's been a really uh, important question that we've had to deal with because, again, uh, as we look across, uh, I, I'm the, as you might, I think you mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm one of the co chairs of the Rural Broadband Caucus. We have to make sure that we're getting broadband out across the United States. We also know that that spectrum is very limited out there, but we're trying to get as much out of everything we possibly, we might say squeeze as much out of everything we possibly can. And I know that one of the positions that we've held is that uh, you know we want to explore where we can find that extra uh, spectrum out there, but at the same time, we have to make sure that we're protecting all those users that are using it right now, because that's, what, that's so important. So as we go forward, it's, you know, that's been the uh, big discussion as to how, how do we get more spectrum? How do we find it? How do we uh, utilize it? 
but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, all that we can, but again, we always want to protect those that are using it right now. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.